Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It is a glorious day outside. It has been said that variety is the spice of life. Each Sunday, we say the same thing. Welcome, glad you're here, however you are worshiping with us. What if we stood up and turned around and wave at those who are worshiping with us online? So if you are willing to do so, would you please stand up and turn around. Together, let's wave. Glad you tuned in today. <laughs> Thank you. We love all of our worshipers here and online. If you have not done so, would you tear off the attendance sheet and fill it in? The ushers will collect those that, uh, later. Many of you have been enjoying this yoga fitness class on Fridays. Whether you are already coming or want to start now, class meets at 10 a.m. on Fridays. A love offering will be accepted. The United Women of Faith will be reviewing plans for the Fall Bazaar this Saturday at 10 a.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Everyone is welcome. We have an exciting October ahead of us. Next Sunday, we will celebrate World Communion Sunday, which is a reminder of all of us, of our connection with, with Christians around the world. This one communion meal we call, this one common meal we call communion and others call the Eucharist is celebrated by all Christians. All next Sunday will we will begin our series on Do Unto Others. Here is a short video clip about the series. Kindness, respect, compassion, love. How do you want to be treated? There is a phrase often referred to as the golden rule that simply states, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It's a call to treat others with the same kindness we would want to receive in return. Yet. During election season, it seems division and polarization are common headlines. In a time filled with negativity, we have a choice to make. Choosing kindness isn't about avoiding our differences, but navigating them with respect and compassion. Kindness has the power to influence even more than an election. It strengthens relationships, neighborhoods, and communities. It helps us find common ground instead of taking sides. It allows us to disagree and remain friends. It builds bridges instead of walls. Let's vote for kindness, one small act at a time. Thank you. The word for next week is kindness. Each week for five weeks, we will have a different word that helps us define what Jesus do unto others as you would have them do unto you. This week, we have a special um, event. One of our precious staff members is having a birthday. Now, ask assistance, please. Wag Wagner. <laughs> um, our precious Kimberly in the back is having a birthday this week, and we would like to acknowledge her and appreciate her by saying a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. We have two other announcements. Um, somehow the first Tuesday of the month gets here way faster than we expect or remember. But the first Tuesday of each month, we have two groups that meet. Our grief group has their monthly meeting on Tuesday at 10 a.m. And our caregivers group has their monthly meeting on Tuesday at 6 p.m. And so those two are really important groups um, and if you've been to a class, it's fine. If you haven't been, uh, you are welcome to come to either one. Thank you. Thank you. 
As we continue in worship, will you hear now the prelude that the Sun City Bells are presenting? Thank you, bell ringers. That was just beautiful. If you would, bow your heads for our opening prayer. Our hearts, O Lord, say, as the deer pants for the water, so our souls long to take a deep drink of water from you. But we need your help to put aside all the concerns we have about life and soak in all the strength and peace that we may face this world we live in. You are our shield and guide. We are most grateful for these gifts you give to us to live this life of faith in you. This we pray in the name of Jesus our Lord. Amen. And now if you would, share the peace and love of Jesus and may we take a moment to greet one another by saying, May the peace of the Lord be with you.
you, would you please join in singing our hymn of praise, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Shall we continue standing as we affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed found in the hymnal on page 881 or here on the screens? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, he sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. be seated and would the children come forward. I'm gonna, do you want us to sit here? Would that be okay? All right. Can one of you come over here? Thank you. You know, I want to tell you a story about a man who is blind. And if someone is blind, do you know what kind of stick they have? Have you ever seen those white sticks with little red around them? And they kind of go back and forth like that so they can see their way. Well, this story is about a man who was out at night with his stick, and he had a light. Woo, that's a bright light, isn't it? 
and he carried a light, kind of like this light right here. And there were a bunch of teenage boys across the street, and they were making fun of him. They said, oh, he's not blind. Why would a blind man carry a lantern outside? And so they laughed and joked, and they were kind of being mean and judging him at the same time. He's just a faker. And so they finally decided they're going to go up and talk to this guy. And they said, are you blind? And he said, yes, totally blind, can't see. Yes. Well, how come you're carrying a light, a lantern, outside when you can't see and it doesn't help you? And he said, it just helps everybody else see me. Yeah, sometimes in people, when we see people, we don't always understand what's going on or why people do certain things. And yet, we're called not to judge them. That's so the Bible says, don't judge people. Sometimes we really need, in a nice way, to go up and, and talk to them and ask them about why a thing is a certain way. Sometimes there's a very good explanation as to why it is they do certain things. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you that we don't understand everybody or their ways sometimes, but that you've asked us to love each other, including sometimes going to talk with people who are doing things that might seem a little different to us or strange. Help us to get beyond strange and begin to understand people. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thank you. You may remain seated for our prayer hymn, but please do sing our prayer hymn, Near to the Heart of God. Let us bow in silent prayer, then pastoral prayer, then the Lord's Prayer.
Heavenly Father, we pray for those who have had to deal with the hurricane. We know those people in Florida deal with it more often, and they some have, have developed some good strategies. But Lord, those folks in Georgia, and especially Western North Carolina, and up into the Appalachians, oh, Father, they are struggling so. We pray that you would hold them near to your heart. We pray for those who have found destruction to their homes, flooding to their buildings, for those who have been so frightened to death having to stand on top of a hospital to get rescued. Oh, Heavenly Father, we pray for them in the days ahead in which the cameras go home and people forget and they have to rebuild, and not only just rebuild, but to be re-encouraged, Father, for this is a huge struggle for them. We pray for the pastors who are conducting worship services this morning, that they may have your wisdom as to the best way to help people who are grieving today, who are hurting in their souls because what they thought was secure is now gone. We pray, Father, for those who are there with the efforts to rebuild, that you will help them. We pray for our UMCOR, our our United Methodist Committee on Relief, and we pray that they might be at work and that we might help them be at work, that people's lives can be put back together. Help us not to forget them in the days ahead also, Lord, because it takes a long time to put it all back together, more than a day, more than a week or a month, and sometimes even more than a year. So we lift them to you this morning. We want to thank you for those that are fly helicopters and patrol the borders, especially in this area near where I live and drive to come here. Thank you for those people who are not only trying to protect the border, but trying to protect people, people who sometimes make choices that we don't want them to make, but they do nonetheless. Thank you that they're trying even to keep them safe and get them away from dangerous situations. Father, we thank you for all law enforcement, for all those who protect us, all those that seek to make good happen in our communities that we may live in this free society. We pray, Father, for each who have gathered here today, that you will bless them, encourage them in their walk of faith with you, because we don't always know everybody's circumstance, but you do, and you know the burdens that they carry, and we want to leave those burdens here. We're going to leave them at your altar. Father, we also pray for our brother and sister, Bill and Beverly uh, Wood, and especially for Beverly's surgery that is happening already this morning. We pray that they may have a good outcome for Beverly. May your peace be with them. We also pray for our brother Hoyt, who normally is at the door greeting us coming in. And we thank you that so far, so good, but we pray that they would continue to wisely treat him while he's in the hospital. We with all those for whom we are concerned about their health and well-being, Father, we lift them to you, and we do that in the name of Jesus. Amen. And may we join together now in the prayer our Lord asked us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you please stand and sing our beautiful hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds.
Would the ushers come forward for the morning offering? Shall we pray? God of grace and God of glory, you have poured your grace on your people. We now would like to pour grace back to you through the giving of our tithes and offerings. Use them that others may know your grace and strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Would you hear now this reading from the Gospel of John 3, verses 16 through 17? For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. For the word of the Lord, for the, the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. Oh, Amen. You may be seated. We'll get there. One way or another, we'll get there. We are in the last of a five-part series on biblical misquotes. And our biblical misquote that we're looking at is love the sinner, hate the sin. Let us bow in prayer. Gracious Lord Jesus, we thank you for your presence here and all the ways you've already blessed us through the singing of hymns, through the prayers, through the bells playing for us. And we pray now that we might listen to even this part of it to hear what you have to say. In Jesus' name, amen. Does God love the sinner and hate the sin? That's a phrase that we hear sometimes. What exactly then? What does God think of us? How does God love us? I know some of you who are here every week think that that's all the words I know. God loves us. But I think of getting the richness of what that means is sometimes harder. We can affirm that in our heads, and yet in our hearts we struggle with it sometimes. To what extent does God love us? Does God love you? Does God love all of you? Or just parts of you? Now, some of us may say, yes, God loves me because, you know, I do good things. I show up in church. I give money in the offering plate. I bring my family with me. I sing in the choir or go to choir practice, and then the choir next week is going to be up in the choir loft. I can do all kinds of things. I have a checklist, and I go down and I do all these things. So obviously God loves the good parts of me. But what about the parts that we don't love about ourselves? What about the parts where we have felt ashamed about something? Most of you know that I have raised twin boys. Now, twin boys have their challenges. And twin boys, one having autism, have even greater challenges. And I came to visit family here in El Paso and left the daughter and the husband at my mom's house. And I took the two boys with me and I went down to a local grocery store. There was only one item we needed. So I held the boys' hands and we walked up and down the aisles and we got what we needed. And we went to one of those fast checkout lanes. And in front of me was somebody with their stuff waiting to be checked out. And I put the divider up and put my tortillas here and put the next divider. So the person behind me who came very quickly could put their stuff there. And I watched my boys. You know, three-year-old boys, they can pick up candy so fast, you know, and they have got that stuff all the way down to their level. And it's like, no, we're not gonna touch that. We're not gonna touch that. And in behind me came a, a probably a 28 year old male, you know, nice tight jeans, shirt, hair, great haircut, cute, you know. And, and then there is my two, three year olds and the autistic one started to walk back toward that person reach out, I thought to shake a hand. He shaked his personal parts. <laughs> I want to tell you that there could not have been a big enough hole for me and the children to slide in. And if that hole had taken me all the way to China, it could not have been far enough. <laughs> and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, get, get over here. <laughs> could you hurry up and check out? I gotta get out of this store now. And I have to tell you, I don't think I ever went back to that store again, ever. 
because I thought I might see that person and I couldn't look at them. Sometimes we have experiences in our, you know, nooks and crannies of our souls in which we hope never to be repeated. And then we were living, uh, we were in transition between my uh, living in Colorado and then going to live in Ohio. And we got into the library and that one got away from me. And there was another man. And I thought right there, they better just make another big hole to China for me. But he figured out where a hand was and shook the hand. Her name was Brenda. Brenda had gone to college. She's working on her degree. She's dating guys. She is enjoying the college scene. And she now has met the guy that she is sure she is going to marry. She is so in love with him, and she is sure he's in love with her. She was ready to pick out her colors. You know, where would she get married? What would it be like? And he broke up with her, went back to his old girlfriend, and then two months later was married to the old girlfriend. There was a lot of pain and shame hiding in her soul. That part, she couldn't love very much. I mean, what was wrong with her? What was wrong with her face? What was wrong with her personality? What, 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 what was wrong with the core of who she was that, that he broke up with her and went back to the old girlfriend and got married? Sometimes it's hard to love ourselves. Sometimes it's hard to imagine God loves all those parts of us. Her name's Susie. Susie was athletic, she could swim, she got her uh, a license so she could be uh, a lifeguard, she taught classes to little children who could, you know, so they could swim and be safe. And she had a friend who said, would you just teach me to swim? And she said, oh yeah, yeah, sometime, I'll, yeah, yeah, I went. Well, then her friend would come back and she'd say, can you teach me how to swim? Oh, yeah, yeah, sometime I will. And sometime never came. And her friend lost her life from drowning. The kind of pain that gets in the soul and you wonder, who could ever love that part? How could God ever love that part of me? God does not divide up this part of us he loves and that part he hates. This part he'll embrace and that part he'll ignore. But it's hard for us. We read, had John 3, 16 read. I, I have learned it in the King James as a kid, you know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever liveth and believeth in him shall never die. I got that one down. But I didn't get down verse 17 very well. God sent his son into the world not to condemn, many translations say, the Greek says not to judge, not to judge others. So God loves us. God came in Jesus not to condemn the world, but to save the world. And that's hard for us because we want to judge others, you know, whether it is the teenage boys and the blind man or whatever the circumstances are. God does not desire for us to judge one another. And yet we have this phrase, love the sinner, hate the sin. That has been around longer than you think. Mahatma Gandhi over 100 years ago had heard that phrase and he wrote, it's really hard to love a person and hate something about them. It's hard to do. And I'm wondering if maybe God is not calling us to do that. Maybe he's just calling us to love the whole person because he loves the whole person. He does not love just the good parts about you. He loves the whole person. And he set up a process in which people came into the world. He said, you know, we got Adam and Eve and, you know, he told us to be fruitful and multiply and he made a process for us to be fruitful and multiply and multiply we did. 
But when we have learned more about the intricacies of what God created, we call human beings, we begin to discover that we're not all identical. We don't come into this world with all the same hormones, not all the same. I don't understand all the different things science has figured out because uh, when I took biology in college, we, uh, our, our botany must have been the specialty of my college professor because we learned our botany well. But there's so much in science about how people come into the world. People don't come into the world just identical. If you're a man, then all men are like this. If you're a woman, all women are like this. Men and women come into the world with both male and female hormones. That was a shocker to me when I learned that one. Really? In me, it's not just female hormones? I got the male, some male ones too. And, and in my husband, he's got male ones, but he's got some female ones too. We're a little bit different. We're unique as unique our fingerprints are. And then I began to learn about people who came in with both parts, male and female. Now these are things that, that have been kept secret. Some of these children hundreds of years ago were killed. They were left for dead, but they come in with both parts. And people used to have to decide, is it gonna be a male or is it gonna be a female? Having no idea about the other chemicals in our brains that define who we are. A story came out of South America about a young man who was about 11 years old and, and he was having all kinds of pains in his abdominal area. And they didn't have all the technology, but they got him to uh, a place that could treat him or try to figure out what this was. And they did surgery. And you know what they found inside this, man, this young man of probably 11 years old? Female parts. He had male parts on the outside and he had female parts on the inside. And it would be easy to just simply say, oh, well, that's just one young man out of somewhere in rural South America. But the truth of the matter is children come into this world, at least 1.7% of our U.S. population comes into this world with both sets of parts. Sometimes they're internal, sometimes they're external. There are people who can't have children because they didn't know that they were, they got both parts inside of them. But if you think about 1.7 of our current population, that means that 5.6 million people have this issue. But we don't talk about it. The truth of the matter is that's how they came in this world. And then we get to the whole thing about people who come into this world who are attracted to people of their same gender. They did not go and get a chance to say to God, by the way, God, I want to be a person who's attracted to people of the same gender as I am. They simply came into this world that way. And when we say, as lovingly as we can say it, I love the sinner, but I hate the sin, we are really taking a knife and stabbing it in them. We didn't realize it, but we're stabbing it in that person and we're saying the way you were born is sinful. And a turning the knife. I would ask and challenge us, and I know that we each in our own souls have to wrestle with this, but I would challenge us to move to, I love the whole person I love the whole person and move beyond thinking about them in terms of their preferences and begin to get to know people as a person. Get to know, I, we spend so much time focused on that that we don't get to know what, what, what hobbies do they have? What's their occupation? Where'd they come from? Who are their parents? What, are they, what, what color eyes do they have? What color hair? You know, what? I think there is so much more depth to persons, whether they come in with two genders or whether they come in preferring a gender of another. I think it would help us 
to love people better if we made the choice to get to know that person. Now, when I first started pastoring, I was a thing. I know you think that's kind of strange. I'm not a thing. Yeah, but nobody had had a woman pastor before there. And, um, you know, uh, I, I, I know what we're in. I'm telling you, it was hard. But once they got to know me, they figured out I was a living, breathing person. It's my prayer that we define love by seeing people as living, breathing human beings. We may agree or disagree about whatever is done or not done, but could we take the step of loving people, the whole person, like God loves us, all of us? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you ache for people who feel outside the circle because they came into the world differently, because what they have is not what everybody else has. Oh, Father, sometimes we get caught up in one thing. Help us to take the next step, not to judge, oh God, but to be like Jesus, who sat with sinners, who sat with, with prostitutes, and not condemn them, but taught them of your love and your care. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you please stand and join in singing our hymn of discipleship, More Love to the O Christ.
Our postlude is a little different than we normally have. We are blessed to have Daniel, who uh, 1130 service leads us in music, does a fabulous job, and he'll do our postlude. But right now, I want to invite every single person, rings bells or came with those or in the church, you are invited to come down for the potluck because everybody always brings lots and we would love to have you. It is a reminder that when you get your plate, uh, go to the table with the birthday and month that you're born in. So they're all set up. So if you're born in January, go to the January table. We're gonna to get to know each other a little bit more. Shall we raise our hands as we're comfortable for the benediction? Heavenly Father, we want more love to thee. And we know a part of that is more love to our brothers and sisters and those who are strangers and immigrants. May we go forth, Father, in that love. Amen. Well, we've got one more song in you. Let's go out with some praise here. Sometimes you have to dance through the darkness, sing through the fire, praise when it don't make sense. Sometimes you have to stare down the giant, worship from the lion's den. Sometimes you gotta shout it from the mountain, louder in the valley, trusting that he's gonna get you there. Sometimes you gotta welcome the wonder, wait for the answer, worship with your hands in the air. I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy, yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. Sometimes you've got to praise in the prison, cry out to heaven, shout it till the doors swing wide. Sometimes you've got to stand on your shackles, brave in the battle, worship with your hands held high. I'll praise you anywhere, praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest he is worthy yes he is worthy of all of the praise give him praise give him praise in the highest praise give him praise give him praise in the highest he is worthy yes he is worthy of all of the praise Praise all my life, blessings day and night, countless reasons why. I'll praise you anywhere, every promise kept, goodness every step, each and every breath. I'll praise you anywhere, faithful all my life, blessings day and night, countless reasons why. I'll praise you anywhere, every promise kept, goodness every step each and every breath i'll praise you anywhere praise give him praise give him praise in the highest praise give him praise give him praise in the highest he is worthy yes he is worthy of all of the praise i'll praise you anywhere over mountains and valleys, I'll give you my praise. I'll praise you anywhere. God bless you. Have a good one. <laughs>